Hello wine lovers, welcome back to my channel. This is Trophy Wine Hunter. Today we are going to review a fifth growth wine from the Poyak region from the 1855 classification system. The wine is called Grand Puy du Cas. Also, a lot of people will call it Grand Puy du Cas, or you can just say GPD. Um, so a little bit about the winery. It was um, originated in 1675 when a person called Arnaud Ducasse actually bought a chateau or a house near the Gironde River from um, uh, Jacques de Segur, which, who at that point owned um, the Lafitte um, estate. And um, that's he kind of started the winery there. But um, through the course of things, he used, started to buy up vineyards. And one of the interesting things is a lot of Grand Puy um, Ducasse's vineyards are not located near the chateau. So they have about 40 hectares of vineyard and um, they have them situated in different places, but all in very good locations. They have basically three main locations for their vineyards. Um, one is near uh, Mouton and Lafitte. One is near Lynchbage and uh, Pichon Baron, and then one is near Ponte Quenet and Damelac. So they've got real diversity in terms of their soils. The other interesting thing is that in 1855, it was no longer owned by uh, Arnaud Ducasse, it was owned by another family. And actually, in that listing of 1855, it was not called Grand Puy, Grand Puy Ducasse, it was called Teau Antique Arnaud. It went through a number of name changes, but the owners or the community in 1932 decided to change the name back to honor uh, Mr. Ducasse. So they named it Grand Puy, Grand Puy Ducasse in 1932. Um, and Grand Puy, I didn't know, it's, it's not a name. It's actually the place, it's a vineyard. And so uh, Grand Puy, you know, big mountain, um, there's actually, it was part of a larger estate. In 1855, there was two, two wineries um, that shared this hill or this mountain. Uh, one was called Grand Puy, and that's listed in 1855 classification with that name. It's now Grand Puy Lacoste. The second winery was called this Antique Arnaud, and it's now known as Grand Puy. Ducasse. The winery historically um, has had its ups and downs. One of the things that um, people don't realize with the 1855 classification system, in fact, um, when they listed the wines in each system, uh, each growth, like first growth, second growth, third growth, fourth growth, fifth growth, they actually listed them in order of um, their hierarchy also. So they were not listed in alphabetical order, but they were actually listed by um, what they thought was the top winery. And again, going back to the 1855 classification system, it's a ranking, not of quality, but it was a ranking of price per barrel in terms of how much um, consumers were prepared to pay for it and reputation. And I guess you could say that equates to quality, but not really. And sometimes in, in any situation, um, some things that have a huge reputation may not be the best quality, but you know, they command the best price. Um, and so it's a little, there's that distinction here. And so, um, but at that point, um, if you look at the actual 1855 classification, when they actually rank them, in the fifth growth section, I think there's 15 or 17 in fifth growths. Um, Grand Puy, um, which is now Grand Puy Lacoste, and this uh, Grand Puy Ducasse, which used to be Artag Arnon, was ranked third and fourth behind, I think Ponte Quenet was the top wine in, in the fifth growth section. So um, does it mean anything? Mm, a little bit, because at least in 1855, this was considered a very prestigious winery so it has the potential of making very very good wines and it's went through a number of um, changes in ownership and in 2004 it was bought by um, Credit Agricole 
which is a big farming bank. It's kind of like um, in our Canada, we have um, uh, Farm Credit Canada. Um, so it kind of lends money to farm. It, it kind of um, supports the agriculture industry. They own a couple other wineries um, like Chateau Menet, um, but this is one of their most famous wineries. So they bought it and that gives them a stability. And it really kind of started to um, really produce well when they had they hired a consultant from Chanteau Angelis and his name is uh, Uber, uh, I think it's Hubert um, de Bois from Chateau Angelis. So he was hired as the consultant in 2013 and that really changed around the winery. So um, again, the wine didn't, wasn't established under the state since 1932. It was okay. Um, it went through a lot of ownership changes. Stability came in 2004. And then after 2013 with um, Chateau Angelis's, um, you know, kind of overseeing and, 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 and consulting, um, it really is making some spectacular wine. So my argument would be that um, it's now historically underpriced. It's a really producing great wines. Um, and it's got a great plate. So here's the label, fairly simple, Grand Puy de Cos. Um, that's probably their coat of arms, uh, 2017. And because they're a growth wine, they can have this Grand Cru Classe on 1855. They can put that on the bottle. Going over to the wine, um, almost a dark purple blood color. Um, very youthful in its um, uh, color. To let you know, I have had this open for a day. I did taste it with other individuals uh, after decanting for about two hours. And this is the second day I'm, I'm tasting it now. So on the aroma, um, I get a little bit of sweetness, almost like... Um, like sweet, um, almost like cinnamon. Um, you also get the classic, um, the classic poi, poi, like dark fruit, black currant, black plums. Maybe even a little bit of graphite here. It's, it's kind of very sweet on the nose. So that, yeah, it's almost like either cinnamon or a graphite but very sweet on the nose, maybe sweet, a little bit of sweetness from the oak. Um, very pleasant aroma. Um, I would say it gives you a light feel. It's a lighter, it's not a heavy feel, um, smelling wine. So it's, you know, if I were to guess, I wouldn't taste it, but I think the acidity is pretty good on this wine. So let's taste it. So on the taste, I would say it's medium body. It's not heavy. The tannins are not aggressive at all. And even I found that when it came out of the bottle, it wasn't really heavy. It's quite drinkable right now. And this is about after obviously um, two hours of aeration. You can't drink it right off the bottle, but with two hours of aeration, it was fine. And now after a day, it's, it's um, quite drinkable actually. Um, it's very fruit, fruity, um, not like uh, Australian or or um, Napa fruit forward, but it's it's got fruit on it for sure. And it's black fruit, uh, pretty classic for uh, left bank uh, Bordeaux. Um, good acidity, medium body. The aftertaste um, has a little bit of charred toast, a little toastiness, um, maybe a little licorice, but um, a little bit of, um, a little bit of almost, like it was cocoa at first, now it's almost like bitter sweet chocolate at the aftertaste. Pleasant. Um, I like the wine. It's very drinkable, um, not aggressive, 
um, not you know I don't think you have to wait very long for this wine um, I think it drinks quite early so I think you could drink this within you could drink it now with um, extended aeration you could probably um, age it another five to eight years and it'd be really in its drinking window um, my rating 90 points right now nice wine there's nothing wrong with this wine very pleasant very um, soft um, easy to drink um, good acidity it's not overbearing it's a very relaxed to me it's quite, quite a relaxing wine um, you know not uh, not gonna knock your socks off but at the same point very good quality and good story and there is quality in this wine for sure so um, I like this wine um, hope you enjoyed this um, review uh, please like please subscribe please tell your friends if you have any comments let me know I love to talk wine and until next time happy drinking